What's going on guys? Today, what three things you can do to help curb PMS symptoms? What's going on guys? Jonathan Shane here, functional nutrition therapy practitioner specializing in metabolic health and women's hormones. Today, we're talking about three things that you can do to curb your PMS symptoms. Okay, PMS, if you don't know, is referring to the symptoms that happen going into your menstruation phase of your cycle. Right, so you have four cycles or four phases of your cycle. You have your menstrual phase, your follicular phase, your ovulation, and your luteal phase. Okay, so PMS symptoms tend to arrive towards the end. All women know what PMS symptoms are in terms of the symptoms themselves. They may not know that that word. Uh, and so just kind of explain that really quick. But uh, PMS symptoms are, you know, extreme cramping, breast tenderness, mood swings, extreme fatigue, all the things that women tend to not enjoy about their cycles. So this video actually stems from a question I was asked by a follower on Instagram. If you're not following me at the Keto Road, please do. If you have not already liked and subscribed to this channel, please do that as well. And um, they just asked me, how can I lower PMS symptoms? And so I answered the question and I thought it would make a great YouTube video. So here we go. Three things that you can do. First thing is intentional stress management. And what I mean by that is not just, you know, being aware of your stress or not, or like, you know, whatever. I mean, intentionally taking time during your luteal phase to decompress more frequently. And even in your follicular phase, like you should have good stress management throughout the month anyways, but especially going into the last bit of your cycle, making sure that you're managing your stress well is super important. Quickly though, luteal phase, right? So we have your, again, your follicular ovulation, your luteal, your menstrual phase. Your luteal phase is roughly day 14 to when you start your cycle and go into your menstrual phase. So that time is really crucial when your hormones are changing, your estrogen progesterone levels are in flux, and that is what can cause some of the more exacerbated PMS symptoms. So managing your cortisol, managing your stress during that time, super important. What are some of the things that you can do to manage that stress better? One, uh, really simple things is try to compartmentalize or separate work life, relationship life, and downtime. And this takes a little bit more effort sometimes than others to intentionally try to tune out other things on your mind. A couple ways that I've encouraged for people to do that is to, if something's on your mind, write it down. Get a journal. Journals are bar none, like, one of the best tools you could ever have for mental health. Like get a journal, write down how you're feeling, make a list, check it twice, get it out, get it out of your head. It's a great way to help tune something out. You just take that time to remove it from your brain by getting it out, expressing it, vocalizing it, writing it down in a journal book, okay? Um, the second thing that you can do is you can work on intentionally having me time. A lot of people, that's really hard to do, especially if you have kids, you have a job, you have a spouse. There's, it's a lot, it's a lot. And it can feel like there's never time for you. But the thing is, is that that is the system that we have created. And so we have to be willing to go through the painful process of kind of changing that environment a little bit by putting our foot down, sticking up for ourselves and saying, no, I need 10 minutes. I need 20 minutes. This is my time. This is my time. And yes, that means something might not get done that should get done. That's definitely a conversation for later for the person that's not getting it done when, you know, not picking up the slack basically when you always pick up their slack. There's definitely a conversation to have. But in the meantime, you still can't sacrifice your alone time because some, you know, something's happening that you want to have happen. You have to be willing to go through that transition and just get used to 20, 30 minutes a day, put in some music, sit on the back porch, go for a walk, whatever it may be, this is my time. And just doing that intentionally, super, super important, okay? So, 
stress management, Manning, managing your stress well through journaling or you know intentionally having me time and trying to separate the different aspects of your life so that you can tune things out and have some quiet time in the space between your ears. Second thing, eat a little bit more during your luteal phase. If you are not, okay, if you are not competing in a bodybuilding competition or you have some photo shoot coming up, there is no reason that you can't increase your food a little bit during your luteal phase. I bring this up because most people that watch this channel are dieting. They're trying to lose fat. They're trying to lose weight. Most people that follow me and talk to me are trying to lose fat, trying to lose weight. And so we're dieting and dieting is stressful on the body. Your luteal phase is stressful on your body. And so there's compound. And so you could take the edge off just by increasing food a little bit. Most women experience and tell me, you know, that when they're in their luteal phase, that's when cravings are the highest. It's because their metabolic rate is higher. They're more stressed. Therefore, their body wants something to suppress cortisol. So they start craving more sweet things, etc., etc. You can avoid a lot of that by just intentionally empowering yourself to give yourself a little bit more food during that phase of your cycle. If you're in a fat loss phase, but it's not dire, right? Like you don't need to hit three pounds down next week, uh, which if you need to do that, we need to have another conversation. But like, just for an example, um, there's nothing wrong with adding a little bit more food the last you know 10 days of your cycle. Yes, it means you're going to lose fat a little bit slower over the course of the couple months, but it keep it keeps your chances of binging and really setting yourself back way way down. Um, it's going to help with the symptoms in general because it's going to help suppress cortisol and feed your body the nutrition that it's desiring. Be surprised what happens when we just give our body what it wants, <laughs> not necessarily what it what it desires in terms of pleasure, but in, in food and nutrition and all that. But what it needs and what it's trying to tell you it needs to function well, right? So enough food. Third thing and last thing, I know we've been on here a little bit here, carbohydrates. If you've never tried to time carbs around your luteal phase, going back to that suppression of cortisol, I cannot tell you how many women I've worked with that all we did was add 100 grams of carbohydrates during the last 10 or so days of their cycle, 10 to 14 days, depending on, on the client. Um, that almost completely over over the course of about two three months completely eliminated PMS symptoms. I mean I mean literally I've I've heard this more than once in messages. Coach, I didn't realize I didn't have to hurt during this point in my cycle. This is insane. Am I pregnant? Why do I not have PMS symptoms? It's just so shocking because we we normalize some things simply because the infrastructure of our society in terms of the medical field is not educated on how important and impactful nutrition is on women's health. You'd be surprised if you just time carbohydrates properly around your cycle, how your body responds in such a powerful, amazing way. Of course, it means avoiding anti-inflammatory foods, right? Like a whole animal-based diet is always a good foundation. And then just adding some low whole food carbohydrates, low carb, um, 100 grams a day or so during those last week or two weeks of your cycle can make a huge difference in how your body responds hormonally and overall symptomatically. All right, I know that was a, a lot. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. I'd love to talk to you about it more. I hope this gave you some insight. I hope it was enlightening. Um, I would love to hear feedback from you. If you have questions, if you have things you would like to add for ladies in the space, obviously, especially you know, if y'all are women commenting, you know better uh, than I do in some of these instances. So please, please share. I, I'd love to learn from you. Um, I hope you get a lot out of the video. If you have not already liked and subscribed, let me know. And if there's anything you want me to cover, I'd love to cover it for you. So just let me know. Again, put it in the comment section. I'll see you on the next one.